look at the trial and look at the safety, the, the safety profile from phase one, phase two. So this statement, no? When they started the trial, let's say June, no? Or March, they started that, no? Like Pfizer now and Moderna and, and Astra are already in the six months of the clinical trial and they, 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 they have still good data that they were able to maintain the safety of this vaccine na walang nangyayaring masama doon sa mga nabakunahan. Okay. Now, do, would you expect a serious adverse event after six months, eight months, or 12 months? Yes, it's not it's not 100% guarantee na wala, no? And that's why they still continue to monitor this uh, uh, individual para lang ma ma monitor natin kung may na ba or wala. Uh, Mini, ano ano to? Kung yung last second question. Sa ano yan? Lima ko kaya wala ko gisuwan. Naba naba si Grace? Si Grace man ang tao ato. Ah, long term complications daw. Mo na yung doctor abugan. Ugkato ha? Okay, I remember. Ah, but as I said, as you said, doc, bago magut tanan. So I think correct me if I wrong. I'm wrong. Na Uh, dili pa ta kasulti no kung pareha ba ni siya og flu vaccine nga every year ta immunize at pareha siya sa pneumonia pareha siya sa hep and mag ag, like for hep kin hanlan tag titers pneumonia once you get your two doses na the appropriate timing protected ka na for life so i think mo na ang question doc uh, yeah. ang pamaagi sa so, pagtatag sa vaccine okay so if you look at there are there are updates in the Pfizer and AstraZeneca vaccine, no? So they are already in the six months of the phase three clinical trial. So, kasama kasi sa trial, they look at the immunogeneity, and they found out that the antibody, as of this point in time, the uh, phase three nila, are still very good. So they, in fact, they said that uh, at this point, six months, we're okay, even after the first dose of the vaccine, second dose of the vaccine, six months after. What is crucial here, what's the next six months, no? So they will still continue to monitor that. And we'll only have data for the durability and uh, duration of the community after they are, are finished with the, the phase two trial. Okay. Um, thank you, Doc. Parihan siya ni Dr. Abugan, mga talawan. Pwede ba mag-emla before magpavaccinate, Doc? We truly, Doc, ha? Dililalimat ko. Ito may emla. Pwede mag-EMLA, Doc. EMLA, anesthesia, hospital, anesthetic. Kaya mga talawan ba yan, Doc? Ang mga doctors. Basta yung mga side effects mo sa anesthesia, hindi sa bakuna. Correct. Bili marula. Bitaw sa katusok, ato ang watahon, Doc. Magpagunit lang sa ni. Si Grace, yun din na magpabakuna. Araw-araw mo nang binakunahan siya. Correct. Yes. Now, a question from Pidya, Doc. Are there studies for children or adolescents to read to receive the vaccine and any recommendations for this age group? For, for children, there is an unbiased study now, so Pfizer now, so that's 12 to uh, 16 years old. So for now, they're not qualified to receive the vaccine. Okay. From our PGIs again, though, if we finish or completed the two doses of vaccine already, kinahanlan pa ba magpa RT-PCR if totally asymptomatic as part of the requirements hospital prior to duty? Well, that if everything will, will still be in place if you are doing the regular monitoring surveillance in your hospital, even after the vaccination, that will still be in place, no? So the vaccine doesn't have any uh, factor in that, no? And remember, no, after the vaccine, you will still have to follow the health protocol, the face mask, the face shield, and the physical distance. Because remember, it will take several months, pa, no? Now we can get the, the the impact of this uh, vaccine. You may be protected, no? So, ganito yan. Mayroon kang bakuna. You may be protected, no? But uh, if you will be exposed to another individual, hindi naman nato ma-estimate if that's 100% because there's no 100% vaccine efficacy. You still have to be careful. But if an individual is also vaccinated and you are vaccinated, you are in one room, oh, pwede ka rin mag-usap dyan, maski walang mask or walang patient. But, if you are vaccinated and you go to a place where most of those are not vaccinated, you still have to wear your face mask. Okay. My question, Doc, um, I think i clarify. 
when man gid ka ma protected after the second vaccine or when jud ka ma kahibaw nga fully vaccinated na gid ka against COVID. Okay, so the, the phase three trials uh, emphasizes that protection starts seven to 14 days after the second dose. So that's the start of how the 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 the, the uh, antibody production on the seven days to 14 days. After that, yung sa, sa like the the uh, uh, Astra, you notice an Astra three months, no? After the third month, from the first dose, three months kapa ang interval, they found out that they they still have a very good protection even with the, with the first dose up to three months. Kaya yung second dose nila will be after three months, okay? So, depende sa bakuna, depende sa immunogenicity data. So, fully vaccinated, two weeks after, then you have a very good protection already. Nalay comments diri si Dr. Junji Doc, mas kignalit siya. <laughs> COVID-19 vaccines, they can decrease your chances for developing severe clinical disease. So, I think ang important sa gida ni Doc, makasabot bitaw ang mga tao Doc sa herd immunity kay um, the more uh, the lecture, di ba? The more we hesitate on getting Yeah, we delete. Especially in countries nga naguna nato, dili sa siya pasabot nga nag-immune na, na vaccinate na ta, magpataka na lang sa ka nga, sige, suroy, walay mask, dili. Diba doc? Observe, gihapot ta sa minimal health protocols. So na yung saka question very doc about receiving more than one vaccine i think ayan pasabot ani more than one type okay so we did nahurot dan sa first doc ba kaya na Pfizer ko doc uy nahurot man nya june ako sa akong second dose pwede ba ko modawat og lain nga type of vaccine doc so so for now no we we discourage the mixing of the vaccine okay as much as possible if we will allocate the vaccine, the single brand, the particular brand to a single individual. That would be better. But, again, but in, in case, no, if in case, na, if in case na, tawag nito, maubos yung Pfizer, ang tanong, pwede bang mag-Sinovac? Pwede bang mag, ah, wala pa namang Sinovac. Pwede bang mag-Astra, no? Or madelay, doc, ang second dose. Or madelay ang second dose. Kung wala ang yung pang second dose, pwedeng i-delay, no? O pwedeng i-delay, but again, as much as possible, you have to receive the, the second dose, okay? Like for example, available ang Astra, tapos wala, wala, wala na second dose of Pfizer, no? There's no study on that, kung it will also uh, uh, complement the immunogenicity of your Pfizer. Because when you look at the, the, the trial, the second dose of the same vaccine, maganda talaga ang immunity antibody. Okay. So if you give another type of vaccine, we don't know how good the immunity and how it will be sustained. Okay. So that's why in the allocation, when you allocate the vaccine, you allocate the two doses for that particular person. So you don't have a problem with the second dose. Yeah. So very important ang master listing. So in relation to that, we know that with Dr. Abugan, maximum time to delay to get the second dose. Ayun na good pag delay do. Availability na lang ato ag doon. Okay na si Grace Bright ba kay na siya. Pero yung mga tanong, mga kuan man alam kong ano nang na, kanang joke joke na tanong ba. Okay, maximum time delay. Okay, walang maximum time. The soon as you can receive the vaccine, the second dose that is recommended. Like for example, the uh, the Pfizer should be received within 21 days, no? For the best time to receive, right? for the vaccine, for those with, who recovered from COVID. 
Natubag naman ni siya. Ah, kani. So, Mini, Mini, ulitin natin na there's no such thing. There's no such thing as best time to receive the vaccine for those who have recovered. If you have the opportunity that vaccine will be offered to you and you have previous COVID, you get it. No, you get it. Okay. So, wala ang ganong best time. The best time is to get it as soon as possible. It's available. Kani dok. First time ko naka encounter ani nga question ever since ko namino no moderate. In bit if in between the first and the second dose nagka COVID ka dok. What? Yes. Ang sama ka mag second dose or imo ipadayon ang imo hang schedule. So you still receive the second dose, but receiving the second dose situate that the patient has already recovered or doesn't have the symptom. Don't give the second dose while the patient is symptomatic. Okay, so dapat walay gibati ang pasyente ni kahatag sa second dose. I don't know if kinsay maka-answer ani nga question, which is question magud ni hapit sa tanang tao diri sa Cebu doc. So Murag kang Dr. Junji yun ni kay specific mga kaayo. When jud mo abot ang vaccine sa Cebu, uh, naaka sa National Vaccine Board, basig yeah. makibaw ka, Dok, o gano'n sa mag-start ang vaccination sa VCMC. So, meaning to say, Dok, convinced na yun sila, Dok, ani nga magpavaccinate yun sila, Dok. Very good. Oh, sana, sana, ha, magpabakunya mo, ha? <laughs> yes, Dok. So, timeline man ni Dok, ilang gipa nga yun? March, first week. Oh, Dr. Junji is answering the question. Jok, ikaw na i-announce. Dok, say mo gusto. First of all, may buntag, Dr. Solante. Hi, Junji. Nagkalungog na kita. Okay lang, okay lang, sir. Okay lang. My fellow public health servant slash specialist. So, thank you for allowing me have even for such a short, ano lang, um, Yes, Dako. I'm sorry, ha. Do not bash me for this, but I'm not the government of the Philippines, nor is Doctor Ronaldo. So, sila nagyod. Oo, ang mahibaw kung kano sa but the but the thing is, most likely, just because na na EU AC Pfizer, but it's just a matter of time that we will be receiving the vaccines for for a. At this point, mo na ako ang gikuan. If you listen and watch the video yesterday when we announced the variant here, murag na 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 viral lang ako ang term ng homegrown. But we would like to encourage everyone to still continue on master listing because we need that for us to prepare ourselves the vaccination campaign. And and after hearing Dr. Ron Jen Solante with this a very fine lecture, we all need to be vaccinated. There's no question about it. And we all know that vaccines are safe. And uh, as healthcare workers, especially those working in the front lines, those taking care directly with COVID-19 patients in the wards, they need to get protected. Okay, so the bottom line there is vaccines, COVID-19 vaccines can really proven to decrease the severity of illness. In fact, uh, we are trying to investigate now those that one um, uh, OFW, I would say, na, na positive dia po siya sa RT-PCR, mean to say na COVID after getting the first dose, and but she is currently, as, I mean, during our investigation, asymptomatic siya, so I would Probably say, not for sure though, but most likely because of the vaccine, even though it was a first dose that she got, uh, asymptomatic siya. So that could probably prove the point. Samay, 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 balik ko tawag ah. That could probably prove the point na decrease yun ang chance niya na no worsen ang iyang COVID infection. Okay. What about? Hope I answered the question. Ang imong IgG levels, ah, kung kung yes, yes. Um, in relation also to the lecture, I really do encourage everyone to voluntarily submit their their um themselves. Go to silingan lamang yun ang DOH no o ang ang ato ang balay sa community hospital. It's just a few meters away. I encourage everyone to have their IgG levels detected or measured. We are doing Marsman, CL, uh, CLIA for the IgG determination. Um, if you're not yet 
uh, uh, you haven't had a history of COVID infection, even better. Uh, with with history, much better. Uh, you will know your clear your your IgG determination uh, uh, IgG level. So it's ongoing. We still have a lot of reagents. This is for free. Ako uh, paninyo mag you take advantage of this opportunity. The results, please uh, provide us your email address so we will email you the the copy of your CLIA. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, so, Okay. One last question, Doc. Um, uh, technical kaya ni siya actually, Doc, pero um, more or less, Doc, unsa daw ang timeline na ma-meet na to ang immunity status sa, ang herd immunity, herd immunity. Teresa, to as a Philippine. Wow. Yeah, the, the target, yeah, the target is uh, around 60 to 70 million Filipinos will receive the vaccine you know, this year. So, uh, quite a big task, not only for the Department of Health, but also for the uh, private uh, individual. No? Private institutions of the health and the other private entities to also be collaborative when we have the vaccine rollout, no? because if you look at the history of vaccination in the Philippines, uh, you look at API, we're only giving vaccines to like 5 to 7 million a year. Giving vaccine to 50 to 70 million Filipinos is really a big uh, population. No? So the, the important question there, do we have the structure? Do we have the uh, capability to give that? No? And all and, and that's part of the current preparation now why uh, there is an ongoing uh, um, forum in preparation for different uh, centers, not only for government centers, but also for, for private hospitals and the local government. You know, because uh, when we roll out the vaccine, and once all of these vaccines are available by phases, you know, by this month, for example, the, the vaccine will arrive, and then the second month, there are priorities. So there should already be priority population in the list. And that's the essence of the master list thing. We have to have this list so that anybody in that particular list should be prioritized. Remember, when you will be, uh, when, you, when, you, when, when you refuse vaccination and you are in that list, you will now be relegated to the last queuing priority. Okay, so hindi ka na makatanggap. So that particular opportunity, you have to have that. Okay, any parting words, Doc? Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank Chai no, for uh, inviting me, and of course, me, me no. Uh, I really volunteered to, to do the lecture here because I feel, I feel that uh, this is one that uh, I hope I can also help in increasing your vaccine confidence, no? Uh, this point in time that uh, everybody should be in one track in terms of uh, all of us should be getting the vaccine. The frontliners, now I'm talking about the frontliners. And it's just a matter of days that hopefully it will come. And you should also be the ambassador also for your families and your relatives and all your colleagues there in Cebu. Uh, the information that you received here, that you heard, uh, to, 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 to enhance their confidence, no? in terms of this uh, COVID vaccine. And I know there are still a lot of doctors that are so negative about vaccines. It's, it's just making them believe that what we are talking here is not just hearsay. These are all based on science. These are all based on correct information. And that's one way of uh, addressing hesitancy to be straight with them, giving them the correct information. So yun lang may no? So I think good luck to all of you there. And we hope that uh, also Cebu can also... Uh, oh, oh, no? Kasi mataas yung rate, ang rate ng attack rate nyo ngayon dyan. So keep safe everyone, ha? And uh, again, uh, looking forward to the time that we will be receiving the vaccine. So, um, let me just wrap it up, no? So... As Dr. Ronjen has said, very important. I think we cannot underemphasize the herd immunity. So the longer we have ourselves vaccinated or the longer the vaccine comes to our shores, the longer can we achieve this. And even with the vaccine, 
ka ng, we should still follow the minimum health protocols, the washing of hands, face mask, face shield, and the social distancing. So I will just quote, it's a short quote, to acknowledge, um, this is what we should always bear in mind, is to acknowledge responsibility that comes with our every right. So um, I'll turn you back over to Dr. Eribal, Dr. Achai. Thank you very much, most Thank of you, all, Doc. to our very own Dr. Solante, no? So, Bisaya, good day, Shat, taga Cebu, good day, Sia. So, we're very proud of you, Ron Jane. So, padayon sa'yo ang trabaho. Terno. Pag-servisyo. Okay. So, to Dr. Sia Dula. Thank you for your day very much. Kamusad, sa'yo ang pag-servisyo. Junji was our PGI. And then, nag-IM o gadyot sa community. So, we're also very proud of you, Junji. Padayon diha, Jay. Sige lang, mga tak-tak, imong buhok, Jay. But, Continue the battle against whatever infection we're facing in. Thank you very much, Mini. So, our Mini is our uh, warrior in the Cebu Medical Society. So, padayan sa pakigbitog, Min. And we enjoin, uh, it's a part of the requirement of the UH. We would like to ask our staff sa BCMC, uh, especially nga naan sa Masri, to remain. Okay, we will have an additional reminder lang, no? So, to all our consultants who are here and uh, attended this forum, thank you very much. And uh, I hope if you have any questions, uh, you can text us, you can forward or inspect the consultants, especially the Palpus Hospital, because I understand uh, and the, uh, uh, which among the hospitals you would want to register uh, to be included in the vaccination program. So, more on the private hospitals now, my. Um, na may uh, share of the vaccine, no? So, daghan ng requirements ang DOH manggod, no? So, there are phases and the phase would be phase 1 registration, phase 2 the orientation, yung magpacheck attendance, so well, that's government for you, di ba, G? So, yes, yes. You don't uh, know about that. Sorry, if I may add, Jai, for a bit lang, sorry ha, sorry to, to ano. Ay, salamat uh, ha, kita namin si Mung Naong. Kanang, in ani, guys, um, since we're all here na, uh, that's right. Uh, we only need to uh, master list our nation if you so decide to uh, list under private institution. If ever you are practicing in several, no, only once. And please do not include your family members. They will have their own master list in the community. LGUs are uh, are are commanded to establish several uh, vaccination stations. So most likely, 100% ang inyong mga kauban sa balay will also be uh, listed under those, especially those uh, elderly. But for us in the hospitals, please, um, um, if uh, the CEER, the kaning website, kaning online registration for the master listing uh, has gone down because it has migrated to VIMS, which is operated by the Department of Information and Communication and Technology, we still need to master lists offline. And when I say offline, uh, we already um, gave you the template. It's an Excel file. I hope you, I, I saw a representative when we um, rolled out our orientation, our hospital, I was there. Uh, I saw a representative of our community hospital. Please continue to master list your um, uh, using the Excel file. And I think when Vince is already okay, then you can upload it, no question. Thank you, Chai. Thank you, thank you. Salamat, Chunji. Doc, last lang doc ha, ako yeah, yapas. Okay. Pero lang na ako doc ha, kaya I'm sure this is the question of most doctors who have clinics in BCMC. So the master listing of the secretaries will be under the LGU doc, is that it's correct? Up, uh, okay, it's up to the, the institution the actually. Institution. Uh, okay. It's up to the institution. Kung ako lang si institution, this is my own personal view, i-appeal na lang na ako. Because yes, they, uh, they work in under the same one roof. Although they are not really employer-employee relationship, but uh, they they are working in one roof. Apilo na lang. Pwede ba maapat sa itong list? Thank you very much. Pwede pa. O, Jay, kaya kung ano, nag-deadline man to sila, pwede iapas, no? Pwede. Ay, kabala ka, pwede. Mudo pa to. Yay! Salamat! Thank you very much!
Thank you to Kaayo G, no? So, once again, thank you very much to our consultants, no? Dr. Mini, Dr. Junji, all the other consultants that attend this year. Um, I will turn you over to the uh, infectious... Uh, yes, anything to say, you know, Doc, so, yeah, I'd just like to ask Dr. Junji, kung asa na ito isa na itong master list in itong CEIR, wala man ito na... Kuan, um, maghatag ni Uglink, ma'am, uh, for the VIMS. Okay, so mo naman ang tong bago no ang VIMS eh, instead yes. of the CEIR ang VIMS. So continue on kung wala pa ma master list ang mga uh, secretaries in town because they are really frontliners. Please do so. I think you can do that in one day lang. Dumubo gamay naman siguro ang ato ang uh, mga kuan diha uh, mga secretaries pero apilon gyud nato sila. And once uh, we already have the link for the VINs, then uh, I will ask the hospital facility uh, coordinator of our regional office to send you the guys the link. Ay, G, na ko iapas na question. Sure. Uh, we received yesterday an email from the DOH, a uh, certain nurse, no, regarding mm -hmm. submission of the micro plans for the vaccination team. Mm. And uh, the email was received by the hospital at was sent to us at 2.47 a.m. And then, it was forwarded to the Infection Control Committee, forwarded to me, I am the OIC now, Dr. Delmar, at 1.55 p.m. And it stated there that the micro-plans na daghang steps ba, katong mga tao, ana-ana, mm -hmm. ang deadline, February 17. Ingko kita may bright ka, ayun nagpadalaan ni Oy. Time 18, gipadaan niya, gahin mo sila. Two governments, no? Uh, government. Yeah, dito sa iyahang kuan ba, memo, is ang deadline, February 17, di human na, Di, nakuwan to siya, na, 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 ungo to siya, nag time travel, man, good? Na. <laughs> Ako, okay lang, ay mong kabalakaan ng February 17. Uh, as soon as possible, ong ta. O, bisag ka ng Monday, okay lang. <laughs> Pero kung wa may problema kung naana may kanang na install ninyo the, the processes are already Yeah, it's there, it's there. So, so bukinahanglan mo gusto mo na name all the person. We will try our very best to to submit it. No? So I, I told the yeah. uh, ICS thing, ato ni forward kay if kita magi maghatag og deadline og kumana ang deadline. So, when is the deadline yesterday? Yeah, you received the notice today. So Anyway, what's Sorry, ha, ako'y mga ipasailo. <laughs> <laughs> Nambuan ko aning, adi, kay tungod bang kod aning variant, bawa na ako na nakita. Sorry, kayo. Ah, thank you. Tawag pa ko ni mo. Tawag pa ni mo, Doc, after. <laughs> okay. Sige, thank you. Napay, napay, koan, samtang napa dari si Dr. Sazula, napa mo ay additional pangutana. I mean, you'll excuse him kung wala na. Kata? Um, wala, wala na, G. Oh. Salamat, Doc. Apas kita. Salamat. Salamat, di. Salamat kay Min. Okay. Uh, I'll turn you over to uh, Mick Mick. Mick, uh, this yes, is a uh, reminder from the infection control. And then after, ano lang, after Mick Mick, uh, na ay uh, gamayang uh, presentation or reminder from the, our HR department. Mick, you want to yes. share your screen? Do you have something to share? Yeah, actually, na ma-ask lang sa Doc, na co-host na ba si Ma'am Carla? Kay... Uh, I, I was in prayer. Uh, so, pwede naman siguro siya ka-share. Uh, yeah. Ikaw una. Check, Doc. Um, sige, hatag na naman niya tanan para ma-scan na lang tanan, Doc. Ah, I think... Okay. okay. Na na, Doc. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Ma'am Carla. 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 Ma'am Uh, as, as part of our help na ma-minimize bitaw ang infection, ma-minimize na may ma-quarantine, gamay na lang kay ang staff, no? So, naana tay policy. So, we just want to refresh yung sa ang atong policies and then we will strictly, uh, ano, uh, impose it na. So, I, I'll, I'll show you first the uh, recorded message of uh, Ma'am Edith. Uh, you can start playing it. <laughs> In the program we're going to present you today is a reorientation of the COVID COVID mitigating measures and internal quarantine policy. All BCMC personnel and affiliates, medical, paramedical, non-medical support staff, and 
security guards are to follow strictly the following. Strict observance of social and physical distancing. All social gatherings, including department conferences, are cancelled until further notice. Alternative measures to continue scientific interaction should be pursued, like this Zoom meeting. Small markers should be placed in areas where people are expected to line up, like the pain section, medical record section, lobby waiting areas, and OPD clinics. It is mandated for everyone to wear masks and face shields at all times. N95 will hire masks for frontliners when facing and handling patients on or when in highly contaminated areas like the salary, respiratory wing areas, and surgical masks or other improvised washable masks for non frontliners. Emphasis is given on frequent hand washing with proper hand washing techniques. Alcohol stations are provided for all at entrances, lobbies, and hallways of the hospital. Observe back etiquette. Always cover one's mouth and duck. Clean, either with a tissue paper with one's hand or with one's hand, and immediately dispose the tissue paper in a safe place that will not contaminate anyone. Do not keep it in one's pocket or bag. Coronavirus are not only in droplets, but must be found in micro droplets, which travel farther distance than the large particle droplets. And micro droplets stay in the air longer, thus infecting others in a closed room. One way or not to go the electric fans are better than using air conditioners. Unless one has a HEPA filter or a negative pressure room, better for a room to be well ventilated with lots of sunlight, UV rays can also help clean the room. Stop touching the face without washing one's hand. Well, because the virus can enter various openings in the face. Also, for any fever or any respiratory problems to the hospital or to the nearest health care resource, either by phone or personally be present in the facility. In this case, we have the area clinic for the concerns. Avoid eating together. Employees, medical staff, and affiliates are enjoined not to eat at nurses' stations, offices, call rooms, and sleeping quarters together. They should take turns when eating and should do so in open spaces or at the designated dining area located at the chapel grounds. Avoid unnecessary handling of things. Personnel should avoid unnecessary handling of things as well as being mindful of where, where they put their belongings. For institution and quarantine policy, any different employee may be referred for quarantine once suspected or exposure or contact with potential COVID-19 patients, whether symptomatic or asymptomatic. The quarantine employee may avail of the facility offered by BCMC if exposure or contamination occurred at the time of duty. Asymptomatic PUIs may be accommodated together in one group with the male and female PUIs grouped separately. Symptomatic PUIs may be accommodated together, like item number three, provided there is a clearance from the ICC. Daily food allocation for three meals will be provided by the DCMC Dietary Department, including bottled water. At no given time will the PUI under quarantine be permitted to leave the facility unless cleared by the infection control committee. Strictly, no loitering in the lobby or moving from one room to the other in the quarantine premises. No visitors are also allowed, and requests for personal necessities can be forced through the supervisor or and belongings should be left at their door to avoid contact with others. Quarantine period will depend on the level of risk, ideally for five days, counting from the day of exposure of activity. It can be extended if necessary by the infection control committee. All other policies created by the ICC for PUI quarantine will be 
uh, from time to time, there will be changes in the guidelines based on DOH and IATF recommendations. For instance, the same employee should be made to sign an agreement form to adhere to the aforementioned policies and procedures. Any violations in the above provision shall be dealt strictly with sanctions as determined by the administration. Thank you for listening. We'll be glad to answer your questions. Thank you very much for the video from the Infection Control Committee. So I just like to to add that um, in as much as most of these uh, uh, policies or measures are already uh, established, no, so we will be um, resending uh, some of the copies of these risk mitigation measures to all the uh, different departments, no, so para marimain niya ubido kasabot pagutana lang palihog, and then. When it comes to the dining areas, no, so uh, um, uh, the findings of the uh, after contact tracing and after investigation of some of our some of our staff who were tested positive, no, so there were cases na kanang magkaon kita untungan in one place, no, so how are we trying to help that? So especially sa katuna sa mga offices, no, so we are providing tents. Uh, diha sa Chapel Brown, pag kay init, no? Ay, the tables and chairs <coughs> as well as uh, behind the uh, behind the ICD office. Yes. Uh, we can we can also use that kanan behind the ICD office na may tables and chairs. Diha kunan panamon na siya. And then, uh, for the we provided the dietary department area na uh, tables and chairs for the residents and PGIs. Yeah. Yesterday, nung utana ko sa dietary, so, morag, ulos ulos bitaw ang mo adto. So, ang pinakadaghan ko ng gadungan is for. So, we will open that area to any staff of the hospital na mukha on during meals niya. Yeah. Yan, yeah, to put sa canteen, uh, ang kanang elevated area bitaw sa canteen sa bandang likod, no, naman na sila yung window, nga pwede na i-open. So, naray area po dito, nga pwede dito mong mukha on. So, for those offices ba, nga inika on ng good Ibo bitaw ang tanggalon yung mask, especially you were in an office, may air condition siya, so kuhan yun na siya, your high risk of infecting each other. So, perfect example, it's the nira kaayaw ka sa itong medical records, no? So, um, especially kung within the aircon, so asa man ang, ang off limits air gaying on, no? So, call room for the residents and PGIs. Uh, ikaw rin siguro, usa, pwede, no? But kanaan mo mag, mag together, it's mag-atubang bitaw mo and then no mask involved, no? So, Better nga uh, open area siya. So, perfect area is diha sa, sa ground. Uh, there are two tents karon nga gihatag sa atong facility manager. But we will be adding two more tents diha para alfresco in yung dining. So, uh, naman mo sa gawas, no? But dili, diha, dito buto sa buto magsikit siya. So, we will be adding tables there o ganang chairs food para maka, makakaon mo tarong. So, dili na supposedly sa sulod sa office. And then I have instructed the members infection control na maground sila daily at, at random hours no buntag og hapon and to to check kinsa ang uh, nag ano sa protocolo kana kita wala nag wear of mask or kinsa nag wear of mask pero wala face shield no so i call nila ang attention so ang ang HR instructed us na whoever are these people na wala nag follow protocol i ano lang sa ilaha I, I submit la ang names and then they'll be given notices to give uh, uh, an incident report or some form of explanation or notice of explanation for their offenses. So, uh, I'll turn you over to uh, Sir Dennis uh, Aitona, our HR airhead, para just to explain uh, what he will do. So, okay, kanisya ka naman. Kisa na masakpan nga na nag-breach protocol o wala na sinus atong policies. So, unsa may, unsa may mga na nang pwedeng mahitabo thereafter, no? So, Ma'am Carla, you can now share your uh, screen. Uh, it's your turn, the HR now.